NBC 29 HD News. Delicate delivery, a crane, a giant crane there carefully moves some new technology into the University of Virginia Medical Center on this blustery Saturday. We will show you how it happens. Plus, Baker's Battle, Charlottesville pastry chefs compete in the first ever donut wars and police are the judge. Thanks for joining us. I'm Matt Tallhelm. Your news at six starts right now. Live in high definition from the area's most experienced news team. This is NBC 29 HD News at 6. Right now, more than 1,800 Dominion customers around Charlottesville are without power after today's high winds brought down some power lines. This is the scene along the 2600 block of Jefferson Park Avenue in the city. JPA is closed at Monta Vista Avenue and Cleveland Avenue right now. Dominion's outage map shows most of the customers that are without electricity are in the Fry's Spring neighborhood and then south of the city along Old Lynchburg Road. Dominion crews arrived on the scene just about an hour ago and they expect the power will be restored there sometime between 8 o'clock tonight and 1 a.m. Sunday. Those winds really are howling out there tonight. Temperatures are also falling. Storm Team 29's <laughs> Norm Sprouse tracking it all. You chuckle for us there because it is cold for what, April 9th? Yeah, this is supposed to be springtime. It feels more like February. It's definitely chilly out and about and those winds a factor today. In fact, on the way in this afternoon, I saw plenty of power trucks out there, uh, both Dominion Power and um, I think, what is it, uh, CVEC was out there. Everybody's doing a great job getting those power lines back up and running again. We salute you. Look at these gusts though. These are the recent gusts. Standards though, a 32 mile per hour gust. But now the good news is breezes will be subsiding somewhat overnight. But we still have this wind advisory in effect for the Shenandoah Valley, Augusta, and uh, Rockingham County and Page County, and right along the crest of the Blue Ridge because we could still see some 50 mile per hour gust and a few more tree limbs could be coming down, causing a few more power outages. And if you're driving a high profile vehicle, keep both hands on the wheel because you be blown all over the road. Red flag warning until 8 p.m. this evening for Fluvanna, Buckingham and the county shaded in purple. Plus, we still have the spring fire season underway, so no burning outside before 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And if you've been burning anything outside this afternoon, you're just flat crazy. Freeze warning in effect tonight, 10 p.m. tonight till 8 a.m. or so, 10 a.m. on Sunday morning for both sides of the Blue Ridge Mountains. So if you've already set your plants out, you need to go take care of them, cover them up somehow or another, keep them from getting frozen during the overnight hours. Wet soil works best, and if you have any succulents out there, they're very sensitive to the cold. Here's what we can expect for tomorrow. Matt, sunny skies throughout the day. We start off chilly, temperatures warm up into the mid-50s, but I'm thinking Monday, Matt, we could see temperatures into the 60s. That part of the forecast in a few minutes. We'll look forward to that. Thank you, Norm. NBC 29 is on the scene of breaking news right now in Fluvanna County, where the sheriff's office is investigating a shooting. You are looking live at the scene along Bell Farms Lane. This is in Palmyra, a little west of Palmyra, south of uh, Lake Monticello. Investigators tell us that one man was shot in the stomach. He has been airlifted to the University of Virginia Medical Center. A suspect is in custody. Charges are expected. The sheriff's office says there is no danger to the public at this time that everything was contained right there in that home on Bell Farms Lane. But again, one man shot at that home. This is a live look at the scene. Of course, we're gathering new information. And as soon as we get it, of course, count on NBC 29. We will update you. The work put in by hundreds of University of Virginia students today is benefiting nonprofits and charities all across Charlottesville. Many of those organizations just don't have the time or the resources to complete these projects on their own. NBC 29's Rachel Menatop is live in the newsroom now to show us how the student volunteers are helping out. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Matt. More than 480 UVA students took part in what's called the big event. It's the largest day of community service for college students nationwide. Anaf Hassan leads the team of volunteers from UVA's Muslim Student Association. Weeding, um, laying out the mulch, uh, digging holes, um, laying out sand. They're planting, mulching, and cleaning up the grounds of Belmont Park in Charlottesville as part of the second annual The Big Event, sponsored by the University of Virginia Madison House. Personally, uh, I feel that you know, we should always be in a giving mood. You know, it's part of our culture, part of our heritage, just to give. Jessica Moreno got involved through her campus ministry. And then when I realized what it was, like it was like 
to give back to the community and also like learn what's going on in the community, like what it has to offer. I was like, oh, that's really cool. She's repairing tires and handles at Charlottesville's Community Bikes nonprofit. It's just cool to like be able to give back to the community um, in whatever way we can. Hundreds of student volunteers gave back to a community that's become like a second home to them. You know, there's a lot of talk about the UVA bubble and you know, sort of being separated from the community. I mean, I've never been to this park before and it's kind of just trying to bridge that gap and you know, say, like, you know, we really appreciate everything Charlottesville does for us and we just want to spend a day giving back. For Hassan, it's about taking small steps toward leaving a lasting legacy. I just feel at this point, we just want to do a good job and we just want to make sure that we leave this place in a lot better of a state than when we found it. Students volunteered at more than 200 sites around town. They say this is their way of saying thank you to the Charlottesville community. A lot of good work there. Rachel Menatoff live in our Charlottesville newsroom tonight. Thank you, Rachel. The Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries is investigating the suspicious deaths of two dozen birds in Fairfax County. Police say the European starlings were found Friday near Avion Parkway and Lee Jackson Memorial Highway. There's no obvious cause of death. Animal control officers collected the birds and sent them over to a lab for testing. The University of Virginia Medical Center is installing three new magnetic resonance imaging or MRI scanners. Today, crews fastened the machines to this big crane and carefully hauled them to an opening in the side of the Department of Radiology. The MRIs weigh between 6 and 12 tons each. Each one costs about one and a half million dollars. And each machine has a different capability to meet the specialized imaging needs of different patients. It's a very important d diagnostic tool because of the pictures it can make and I've been working with magnets for 30 years and the only thing people jokingly say is if you have too much exposure to magnets when you wake up in the morning you tend to point north. The MRIs range in size. Some are fairly wide while others are smaller to allow radiologists to see the smallest parts of the brain. A central Virginia food pantry says it is in need of some big bucks to keep its new building and services intact. Loaves and Fishes in Charlottesville is launching a capital campaign called Build Today, Feed Tomorrow with more than a million dollars as its goal. NBC 29 Spencer Burke is here with those details. Good evening, Spencer. Good evening, Matt. Well, after moving into a bigger space last summer, board members want to keep up with renovations and pay off the building. So they set a goal of raising $1.2 million. Right. Potatoes. Loaves and Fishes in Charlottesville opened its new facility last August. The food pantry was seeing more people coming in and sought double the space. Now more money is needed to pay for the building and to renovate it. We have a $1.2 million capital campaign. The campaign is called Build Today, Feed Tomorrow. Board members have already raised about $812,000. The additional $388,000 will be used to help us continue paying off the building. The food pantry facility was built in the 1960s and needs some sprucing up. Money raised in the campaign will also help pay for future renovations. Old air conditioning systems, we did replace one out of the three air conditioning systems, but uh, in the future there may be other repairs like that. This drain could also use some improvements. The pantry's director says the area fills with water too quickly and doesn't drain easily. So if you have a larger drain, then it can drain a lot quicker. The pantry serves about 1,500 low-income families in the community each month. Directors want to build their capital campaign today in order to maintain their new and larger space for years to come. This is our first capital campaign ever, um, and it really came about because we did grow so rapidly um, in our old space. The board says it's hoping to reach the goal by early next year. If you want to donate to the pantry's capital campaign, we have a link on our website at NBC29.com. Spencer Burke in the studio. Thank you, Spencer. The Charlottesville community is supporting a nonprofit that collects toys for children in the hospital. Mason's Toy Box is an annual holiday drive held in honor of Mason Thomas, who passed away at the age of 11 after a six-year battle with a rare form of cancer. The, he began his treatment at the University of Virginia Medical Center. Today, Mason's mother was on hand to collect donations at the new Residence Inn in downtown Charlottesville. After he passed in June 2011, my friend came up with the idea of delivering toys to children in hospitals for that holiday season. Um, and so we started with the University of Virginia and it's just expanded over the past five years since then. 
Mason's Toy Box wants to do more fundraising events in the community. Members will host a gala in Richmond coming up in June. The competition was on today between professional and amateur donut makers from around Charlottesville. The first ever Donut Wars was held this morning at the new residence inn on Mayton Street. Sh uh, chefs from several shops as well as amateur bakers took part in the competition to battle it out for the title of best pastry as well as some other categories. It's about the best donut in Charlottesville. We're going to be voting for the most creative, the best tasting, most unique ingredient, and most popular. Police officers served as the judges. You know they liked some donuts there. Community members could also vote for the most popular. Best overall donut went to Miso Sweet in downtown Charlottesville. Most popular went to Duck Donuts. Proceeds from today's event will go to Mason's Toy Box. The Boss cancels a concert in North Carolina in response to that state's anti-gay laws. Plus, the wind and cold could not stop these wine lovers from sampling the vino from dozens of Central Virginia vineyards. We will take you to the Monticello Wine Festival. Yeah, we had plenty of sunshine today, but not much warmth and some pretty strong gusty winds. But don't worry, tomorrow will be better. Details in a moment. And later in sports, the Virginia track and field teams host an invitational meet at Lanigan Field. We will have the windy highlights from there coming up.